I'd like to say, I think um, you get paid more for scaring people than you make them laugh. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a difference, I think, and it's, it's not a bad thing, it's good things. Very broad church. Um, broad church? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that, uh, that there is black humour, uh, there is uh, the crime novels where it's funny because the crime goes wrong. Uh, uh, and then there are humorous, there are comedies, and there are comic novels, and then there are humorous novels. I think a lot of crime writers were essentially and um, instinctively witty. I think of people like Reginald Hill or Robert Barnard, who never wrote a dull book. Uh, I mean, they were, they were genuinely witty writers, but they didn't write comedies. They certainly didn't write black comedies, except possibly occasionally. But I mean, <clears throat> when I, I discovered comedy, black comedy, if you like, noir, comedy noir, Mm. was a uh, chap called Carl Hyacin, American. Oh, yes. <coughs> now, one of his early ones that I read, and <coughs> pardon this, it's, if you don't know the book, which is um, Double Whammy, uh, there is a scene where a, a deranged gunman, who's a pretty office truck, <coughs> um, breaks into a, a, car a mobile home, and he's using a sharpened screwdriver to lock the lock door. And it doesn't because he's illiterate, he misses the sign which says this mobile home is guarded by pit bulls. Oh. Right? <coughs> so he gets in and one of the pit bulls comes up, launches itself and clamps his jaws across his forearm. Fortunately, he's got the sharpened screwdriver in the other hand, so he goes <coughs> through the skull. Right? So he's now got a dead pit bull with his jaws locked on his arm. <coughs> he flees the scene in crime <coughs> to go to New Orleans. <coughs> on the way there, he realizes that he's feeling a bit odd because the pit bull has rabies. <coughs> so he's now getting rid of it. So he breaks into a garage where he finds a little mask and so on. Puts his body there, finds a hacksaw, and just cuts off the, the, the head. So he's just got the head. <laughs> and, and he's gradually going mad. It's coming to rabies. And, you know, it. and then the gag for anybody who's been to New Orleans, <clears throat> as he turns off the, the turnpike, he says, exit for the Pontchartrain Bridge, which, if anybody knows, it, is a toll bridge. So he has to stop <laughs> and do that. <laughs> Give his money to the girl in the booth. And the girl in the booth doesn't bat an eyelid, gives you back his change, says, nice doggy. And he's <laughs> now, now that whole thing, is, the whole scene's about four chapters, and it's brilliant. And <clears throat> such was the, the impact. I remember when that came out, and it was very little known, because the house had terrible trouble originally finding a publisher in this country. Um, but I went to a bizarre I went to a reception at the House of Commons. And one of the one of the MPs there was a guy who reviews for um, Scotland on Sunday. Oh, gosh. Stuart Kelly. No, no, he's then been an MP for, for <laughs> millennia. He's the oldest Not father Catherine. in the house. Yeah, it's Joe Catherine. 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 No, Catherine. And he knew we were both reviewers. And I said, Have you read this book by Carl Hassan? And he just went. <laughs> <laughs> And that was, that was the secret, so my friend was double whammy for that. Uh, so that's a good joke, a good, very fun book, not one of mine. Broke all the rules, we get back to yours in a second. Uh, broke all the rules because we all know nobody can get published in this country if they kill a dog. Mm.